Hello, this is Billy again. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys today about why do I collect movies? Why do you, some of you collect movies? So on and so forth, especially this being the year 2021, I feel like now is the best time to uh, get to the hobby. Um, probably don't go too crazy with it, maybe not as crazy as I have, um, but it's always good to start somewhere and have a little bit of your favorite movies um, at least in a physical format. Um, my first example of why I like to collect physical movies is, uh, for starters, they don't really have a good way of streaming 3D Blu-rays yet. Um, I know Fandango, if you use the Oculus app, I have a Oculus Quest 2 right there, if you use the Oculus app, Oculus TV, um, you can stream some 3D movies there for like $30 a piece, and I don't think those are yours to keep either. Um, you can watch some of them through big screen and VR as well, but if you don't want to watch them in, B in VR um, in the States here, I'm not sure if there is a way to actually legally stream 3D movies. So that's one big reason why I collect 3D Blu-rays, because um, I feel like that would be the first thing to go. Um, so get them while you can, uh, any way you can. I know there's legal methods of doing that, so on and so forth. But you know, you never know what you're going to get. In, uh, you never know what you're going to get with that. It may not have the best uh, rip to it. It might not be to your liking how it was ripped. Uh, might not work for your device. It might not include the language that you want or the audio option that you want. So, I would collect things that you feel like you never will be able to get on streaming, or at least to your satisfaction. Um, another big reason is uh, I was going to talk about this first, but then I got carried away on 3D Blu-rays, but I'm a fan, um, is this set right here. Right here. And I would say right now, and, you know, my favorite movie has kind of, it's gone from like Star Wars to Godzilla to, um, to The Matrix for a number of years. Um, but really, you know, for the past few years, and especially when I've been collecting movies, which I've kind of found out to myself, is uh, my favorite movie of all time right now is Rocky One. Um, I have Rocky One actually digitally as well, because that one's Dolby Atmos on uh, iTunes, and iTunes is a super awesome way to stream movies uh, or with the Apple TV. Um, so if you're going to stream anywhere, I suggest getting the Apple TV 4K streaming that way, but... Um, Sylvester Stallone, you know, uh, he's a great writer, great actor, um, great director, all that stuff. Um, but something he's doing recently is making his director's cut of Rocky IV. Now, he is the director, so I guess that would be his cut. Um, but usually when people think of a director's cut, they're uh, thinking like, oh yeah, he's going to add a bunch of scenes. No, I mean, he might be adding some scenes. I haven't looked that far into it, but I know for sure he's cutting at least one scene and that's Polly's robot. Um, so the happy birthday Polly robot at the be near the beginning of the movie, um, spoiler alert for the, around the beginning of the movie, um, unless you're watching this new director's cut, then you're not gonna see it. So he's, he's taken that robot out. So it's gonna really, I think some people are, are really excited for this director's cut and they don't really know what they're getting into with it. I mean, I still suggest getting it and seeing what his version of the best version of that movie would be, but I don't like him taking out something that's kind of important in my opinion uh, to not really like the story, but just the time period in general. So if you were to go back in time to, I don't know when, Rocky IV was made, like 84, or no, I have it right here, I have it right here, 1985. If you were to go back into a time capsule to 1985, you'd be like, hmm, I wonder how movies were made back then. And all of a sudden you start seeing these robots in all these movies, you'd be like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, so apparently back in the 80s, they really liked robots. So I think it's important just to the time period that it stays in there. Maybe it makes the movie a little more cheesy than he wanted it to be, but I mean, I think for anybody who's watched Rocky IV, like half the movie is a music video. So it's like, it's it's already not, 
it's already not like a classic like Rocky One. I mean, a lot of people consider it the best Rocky movie, but um, I, I love Rocky Four. But it's like it's already a giant music video. Why are you taking out a robot from the movie? anyway? So that's one reason why I like to have physical media. So now I have it on this collection, this Blu-ray collection. There might be a better collection. I don't know if there's a 4K version that has it. Um, but I know this version still has it, so I'm going to hold on to this. That's why I have it right here on the shelf. Um, and this has Rocky 1 through Rocky Balboa, which is actually a great movie as well. And I need to get Creed 1 and 2. I have Creed 1. I need to get Creed 2. It's Creed is... The new Creed movies are... They need more credit. They're actually very good. Um, same guy who did the score for the new Creed movies uh, did the score for Black Panther and the Mandalorian theme. I know you guys probably heard that. Um, so another reason why I like to collect uh, physical media is, uh, you know, it's I can basically play it anywhere. Um, if the internet goes out, I'll have an, a copy for it, yada, yada, yada. Um, but it's it's just nice to be able to say, here, hey, here's my movie collection and I know um, back in the 90s and time period I grew up grew up in, I used to go to people's houses and they would have like a whole shelf next to their TV of a ton of VHS tapes. And it'd be kind of cool to kind of browse through it and be like, oh, I like that movie. I like that movie. And uh, you could say the same thing about books. And now if you go into people's houses, um, you basically say, oh, uh, you know, um, Oh, I think I've seen that uh, that fake planet Garden Ridge. I don't know. So it's like people are losing the character of their house. I think it kind of shows character in a house, like what kind of things you're into versus just like what, you know, decorative art pieces you have and stuff. So, I mean, granted, maybe that's my uh, uh, I never grew up kind of <laughs> line of thinking, but uh, I don't know. I mean, people, I would assume book readers probably agreed with me too on that um, so it's just nice to have something I mean maybe you won't don't want to display them quite like this but at least then you'd still have some sort of collection to go to and uh, you know slowly but surely you know uh, people aren't gonna even have blu-ray players anymore or DVD players I understand that so it's not for everyone but it's why I collect movies it might be why you collect movies um, but yeah, both didn't mean to rant too much there, but um, I will say some of the things I like looking for when I walk into like a half price books or a pawn shop or something is um, I look for the 3D Blu-rays um, in terms of what I'm looking for when I'm collecting stuff. Uh, looking for laser discs. I really like laser discs. Um, I go into antique stores and try to find some old Super 8 millimeter films. Uh, those are really cool. Just for themselves I, I suggest everyone try to find those because uh, those are those are just neat to have because a lot of people don't even know movies even came out in that format people thought that format was just for old home videos but um, but another thing I like to find when I go out to the store is these uh, you know mystery science theater movies um, you know because these are really fun uh, you can stream almost all of this online now and they keep throwing them on new streaming services but the physical editions are really cool just to have just because sometimes they lose the licensing on this stuff and then you can't find it again um, I don't know if I have it here oh I do so Godzilla vs Megalon was made on for the Mystery Science Theater and Toho ripped the license from them because Toho is kind of funny with ripping licenses and stuff I'm not even sure why they do it half the time um, so they took this one away. Uh, so they made like one physical edition of this movie. And that edition goes for like over a hundred something bucks on eBay now. And I found it thankfully on one of the torrent sites and made a copy for myself. So someday I would like to get that actual version. But until then I have this. Um, but if they ever pull that licensing crap with any of these other things, I at least have physical copies. Um, and another cool thing is with these old DVDs here, um, they would also have these, which I don't know if you're familiar with Mystery Science Theater, but it's basically they watch, they usually watch old crummy movies 
and um, there's you can kind of see the uh, silhouette of them in, in movie seats and there's a robot there's a couple of robots and then Mike or Joel or, or whatever there's another picture of them um, so they sit in front of the movies and they kind of poke fun at it and uh, the old movies they came with these so you could put them like almost in front I think this is a sticker so I so I don't have to do it to this movie because I already has them but I could like pull out something like you know, like this probably deserves it. The remake of Point Break. And I could just like throw that in front of there. Like, yeah, look at that. Eh. And you could just like pretend that there's like a funny commentary of this movie out there somewhere. There probably is. But yeah, you could do stuff like that. And you'd have to take the sticker off, of course. But I thought it was funny. I actually, um, there it goes. Uh, a few months ago, I actually uh, printed that uh, this out in a, a piece of paper and I cut it all out and then put it on a piece of cardboard and cut it out and was trying to watch regular movies on my projector with like the Mystery Science Theater guys in front of it. It, was, it made me laugh. It was something fun I did. But, um, I'll have to have a whole video on Mystery Science Theater. That would be fun. And uh, later they became uh, Rift Tracks, which you can find there a lot of their stuff now. Um, but yes, well, th thank you for listening to me rant even longer. And um, hope you guys have a great day. Thanks. Bye.